This is the day the Lord has made Father, I'm ready to hear what you tell me Morning by morning, the Lord of the worship Giving you glory all of my days Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to welcome you for morning by morning. Let's lift up our hands and thank Jesus. Father, we thank you. All of the glory is yours. All of the honor is yours. All of the praise is yours. Thank you for giving us a new lease on life. Thank you for your protection, for your kindness, for your provisions and for your guidance. We're asking that this morning you will teach us in the name of the Lord Jesus, even as we wait upon you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus much less them will pray let's go back to our anchor text we're still in genesis chapter one and verse one in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth i think one translation said the heavens i'll prefer that translation the heavens and the earth i want to use for a title three types of heaven or three levels of heaven or you could use uh, whatever you, you like. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, open our eyes, our spiritual eyes to see and to hear what you're saying this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. So, in Genesis 1, when the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven. King James said the heaven, but I think New King James is more accurate. It says, the heavens and the earth. I hope that's what's there. The heavens and the earth. So, it suggests to me that there are, please listen carefully, there are multiple heavens, but there is one earth. There are multiple heavens. The word in the original translation suggests that there are multiple heavens, but there is a singular earth. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if you're going to be an effective believer, you must live in the awareness of the heavenlies the heavenlies now in psalm 115 the new king james version it says and i quote the highest heavens the highest heavens belong to the lord but the earth he has given to the sons of men suggesting that there are heavenly layers. If there is a, if in the highest heaven, I can safely assume that there is a high heaven, a higher heaven, and the highest heaven. Amen? So when it's saying here, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. King James says sons of men. Uh, and Ivy says, says mankind. Suggesting that there's not only one heaven. There, there are multiple heavens. And there is a singular earth. The third reason why I believe there are multiple heavens. You'll find in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 2 to verse 4. Paul put it like this. I know a man in the spirit who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. But God knows such as one who was caught up to the third heaven. I hope you have it there. To the third heaven. Now for him to say there's a third heaven, there must have been a first heaven 
a second heaven and a third. So when he said, I've come to the third heaven, we can safely assume and believe that there's a first heaven, there's a second heaven, and there's a third. He now said, when he went to the third heaven, I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise. And he heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Let me explain. He's saying a very powerful principle. That the higher you go, not everything you hear is for speaking the higher you go now this is not only so spiritually it is also so politically one reason why people don't rise and cannot play in major leagues is they lack the property needed there the property needed at the highest levels is discretion Discretion is knowing what to say from what to keep. There's what to share, there's what not to share, there's what to say, what not to say. And anybody who lacks discretion, discipline, cannot play in those major leagues. You're saying basically you want to operate in high places, you will be exposed, you will hear things that you cannot say. As somebody who rolls with the who and who in my own field, not everything I hear from them can be. So I sieve those conversations. Some things I hear, I can say. Some things I hear, I can't say. Discretion is needed. So Paul was saying that here. Not only spiritually, but I was saying that. And, and you, you would, later we'll talk about that in other portion of scripture. Many people cannot play in the big league because they, they are gossips. They lack discretion. They don't know what to say, what to keep. And once you're that kind of person, and you are discovered, you can't operate in that place. So, but the point I'm making is there are different levels of heaven. So I believe from Paul's writing that there are a minimum of three. Let me just a minimum of three based on scripture. There will be the high heaven. The higher and the highest. Please follow me. The first heaven is what I call, or what the Bible calls, the firmament, or what I would call the atmospheric heaven. This heaven is one that when you look up, you can see it. It's what some call the sky. This heaven is visible to the natural eyes. You see that in Genesis 1 verse 7. Verse 8, he said, Thus God made the firmament, and he divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were. So what is up there is basically is, 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 is water. So God divided the waters uh, above the firmament uh, from the waters under, and the waters that were above, he called heaven that is where you see the sun the stars it is perceptible to the human eyes amen when we fly from nation to nation from state to state what we are flying around on is the atmospheric heaven you see that again in the psalms 89 verse 36 to verse 37 it said you see shall endure forever is thrown as sun before me, it shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Hallelujah. The faithful witness in the sky. That's the atmospheric heaven. It's perceptible to the human eyes. And we must be aware of that. The second heaven is what I will call, I won't call this the second heaven or the higher heaven. And I want to call it the satanic heavenlies. The satanic heavenlies. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3, it says, And you he made alive, who were dead in your trespasses and sins, 
in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the loss of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we are by nature the children of wrath, such as others. So, this second layer of heaven is talking about the layer of heaven where Satan, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness, and from those places, the exact a disobedient influence on the sons of men. It means that human disobedience has its, its, its origin in satanic orchestration in high places. So in Ephesians 6, as for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the second hell. And anybody who uh, 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 Peter Wagner calls the strategic level warfare, anybody who will engage in strategic level warfare must understand, amen, that there is something, there's, a, there's a, a layer. When you study the book of Daniel, you would see when the Daniel was talking, Daniel was talking about the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece. And then he was talking about how that when he wanted to uh, get the answer, it took about 21 days to get through. Hallelujah. There was a resistance in the heavenlies against what he had to offer. And these things are very important, foundational understandings. But there is another layer. There is another layer. And we must become adept in spiritual warfare if we're going to see significant victory. Lastly, is what I will call God's heaven. Deuteronomy 4 verse 39. Know therefore this day and consider it is in your heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. So this, what I believe to be the highest heaven is God's heaven. God's heaven where his throne is domiciled. Now, listen to me and listen to me good. All of this heavenly exact specific influences in the lives of men. Are you getting what I'm saying? Probably uh, tomorrow, so I'm going to. All of this exact. So you're not just living your life without a consciousness of cosmic influences on your actions are you there the exact to the degree to which you are spiritual you can tell that some things are against you and you must be the kind of person who knows what it means to put on the whole armor of god amen and i'll get there probably subsequently you have to learn to war in the heavenlies Probably tomorrow I'll explain that to you. Because many times people are just living their lives, evaluating everything from a human point of view, looking at the news from a human point of view, looking at culture from a human point of view, looking at everything, even looking at what is happening to them from a human point of view. Not conscious of the fact that the cosmic level exerts but specific influences. Hallelujah. Now, in the course of time, I'll explain to you how that that other heaven was occupied because in revelation about 12 what happened there was that there was a war in heaven and satan and uh his own at one third of them fought against angels and were cast down and these entities are inhabiting a cosmic level exacting having great wrath knowing that they have a short time uh, in the lives of people and we must live our lives in the consciousness of that. Let me just stop here because my time is up. Please be conscious of the fact that when you say that, may I am not looking for something, there are things that are against you already. You must live in that consciousness and you must make up your, your, your mind to be a warrior. 
so I just want to drop this in your spirit. It means that we must be spiritually sensitive. We must be people who are sensitive to the whole armor of God. And we must be people who are sensitive to the cosmic level of the warfare that we're facing in life. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, your life will not be a victim of satanically orchestrated manipulations in the name of the Lord Jesus. We must live in the consciousness of this. And in the course of time, I'll explain to you how to navigate uh, these heavenlies to generate the outcomes you need on the earth. That's as much as I can go this morning. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and thank Jesus. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. And let's give him all the praise. This morning, I, I want to pray for spiritual fortification for you and your family. Ephesians 6, 4. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your, having gid your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery doubts of the wicked one. He now says, and take off the helmet of salvation. The sort of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Listen to me. You must be fortified. You must be fortified. You must live your life in the consciousness of your opposition. Amen. Those who don't live in the consciousness of their opposition are not likely to last long in their position. I want to pray for you this morning that in the name of the Lord Jesus, my God will open your eyes to everything the enemy is doing in your space. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that as a result of this morning service, you will no longer be ignorant of what the enemy is doing in your space. Second Corinthians 2, verse 11. It says, Lest Satan shall have an advantage over us, we are not ignorant of the devices. I pray for you that in the name of the Lord Jesus, my God will bring you to an awareness of whatever the enemy is doing in your life. In the name of the Lord. Please lay your hands on your eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for you. God will give you seeing eyes. God will give you hearing ears. God will give you a perceiving heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for you this morning that whatever the enemy is doing in your space, he will miscarry. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever the enemy is concocting, every satanic conspiracy, every satanic conversation, in the heavenlies, I command it to be aborted. Everything that happened in Job's life was a function of a conversation in the heavenlies. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, every conversation in the heavenlies that is not to your favor, I scatter it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I divide their tongue. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this morning, I speak to satanic wombs and satanic incubators that whatever Satan has programmed to happen in your life negatively in the next three months, in the next six months, in the next one year, I command it to be aborted right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. He says, give them, O Lord, give them scripture. He said, what will you give them? He said, give them a miscarrying womb and dryness of breast. Everything Satan has conceived over you and your family, highly scheduled this year. I command it to be aborted in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command it to be aborted in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command it to be aborted in the name of the Lord Jesus. Over your life, I command the womb of the enemy to miscarry in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything happening against you, working against you in the satanic heavenlies, I command such conspiracies to die 
die right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, I'm saying, let us live our lives with spiritually, spiritually conscious. Amen. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Many people see Satan moving. I'm like, ah, you don't deal, you don't just watch. Amen. Let's live our lives with discernment. But let's live our lives with a consciousness that even if we claim not to be against anybody, the enemy is against us. And as God gives me the grace, I'll come back uh, to expose this issue in the coming days. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for you that in Jesus' name, whatever the enemy is doing in your life this morning comes to an end. Let it be exposed. Let it be exposed. Let it be exposed. Jesus, mighty God bless you as you go into your day. Jesus, mighty